Hey guys, MC Stu here, and today we are going to take a look at a build for the Tactical Escort Retrofit. Um, this ship can be obtained by reaching level 61 where you receive a token and can pick up one of three different ships, the Defiant, the Voyager, and the Galaxy Class, um, or Intrepid and Galaxy Class, I guess is more specific, Tier 5 versions of those ships, um, and you can get that for free just by reaching level 61. Uh, the build that we're going to be looking at today is 100% free build. Um, it's going to be made up of mission drops, some level 1 and 2 rep gear, and also some crafted gear. I'll have some options as there is some stuff from the Phoenix boxes that are is pretty easy to get, um, as well as some gear off of some tier 4 ships and 3 ships that can also be purchased in game with Dilithium, and I'll also have some additional um, options if you don't have some of that stuff yet. Um, as for the rest of it, if you don't have some of this stuff, you'll need to get it in game. It's free. It just takes time playing the game and having fun. Um, so we're starting off with, uh, with the Defiant. I had a poll up at uh, the beginning of December looking at all three of these ships and which one you guys wanted to see first. And uh, the Defiant uh, ship here won. So that's what we're looking at first. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into it and see what we are working with. So what I put together on this is going to be a, and let's just talk about how good this ship still looks. This has really stood the test of time as most Star Trek ships have, um, but I wanted to mention that because every time I look at it, I just, I really like it. Um, all right, before I get more sidetracked, let's take a look here. So what we're looking at is a cannon scatter volley build. Um, so let's just go ahead and jump right into it. I am using a three-piece set here on the front and console, and we'll take a look at these individually uh, and the set bonus when we get down to the console. Um, so this is the Quantum Phase Dual Heavy Cannon. This comes from the mission... Um, Sunrise. And this is from the Future Proof Arc. You'll need to run this through three times and pick up this piece, or these pieces. Um, so we're running the Dual Heavy Cannon uh, from that drop along with the Torpedo up front. Um, the Cannon has similar procs to a stock one, but with a special proc, so you have a 2.5% chance to drain from enemy shields and restore your own shields. Um, even if this procs a lot, you don't get a lot out of that. I really just view this as a free dual heavy cannon that you can pick up. Um, so get it. It's a good weapon. It's better than, you know, having to spend resources crafting or buying it off the exchange. Uh, we'll jump over to the torpedo and then we'll talk about the two in the middle. So this is also dropped from the same mission. Um, it's the quantum phase torpedo, and this is going to have some similar procs. Uh, so two foes, um, and the way that they lay these out with the percentages here, let's take a look, it makes it kind of hard to see. So this is going to have, um, this is upgraded, but it hasn't been re-rolled or, or quality gone up. So you're going to have a base plus 2% critical chance and plus 20% critical severity with this weapon right on the top. 20% chance to improve recharge time by five seconds. Okay, that's from a duty officer. Um, and I don't see a chance associated with the proc on this torpedo. So this torpedo fully, or it's not fully upgraded, but at Mark 15 does a pretty decent amount of damage at 9,000. Um, kinetic damage, uh, two foes, we have a negative 2,888.2 all shields in a, uh, All right, let's take a look at the Quantum Phase Torpedo. So it's a pretty decent torpedo. Uh, does a decent amount of uh, kinetic damage once fully upgraded to Mark 15 um, at 9,225 in kinetic damage. Um, two foes, the proc or the ability, the special ability that uh, this has is to um, take down enemy shields. And it does it in a radius uh, effect kind of a style here. So we have a uh, negative... 2,888 all shields uh, reduction uh, in a two kilometer radius when you're using this with high yield or torpedo spread 
um, it'll increase to a four kilometer radius. Um, and so using this under a firing mode, you're going to get more out of that reduction to shields, but it still has uh, basically half that um, or it's it's the same amount of reduction of shields, but a larger radius of effect if you're using it under a, a special firing mode. Um, so this is not tied to a percentage proc, which is nice here. I don't see that anywhere on the tooltip. I, I thought it was, but I guess I was incorrect about that. So that is that's nice. So you're just going to get that right off the top anytime that you're firing this torpedo. So let's take a look at the two weapons in the middle here. So the first one is going to be the prolonged engagement. Um, um, this is a dual uh, cannon, not, not dual heavy. Um, this has a chance to increase the firing cycle haste for this particular weapon uh, for up to eight seconds. So 20% uh, firing haste is the, um, the amplification relay that it has, um, and this will stack. So that is your, your maximum amount of stack. So per stack, this weapon deals 1% increased damage, and then um, every stack of five, we're gonna get gain a 20% firing cycle haste. Um, so with energy weapons in general, um, the faster they're firing, the, the faster that firing cycle haste is, the more DPS and damage you're gonna put out to the enemies. So this comes from the, uh, the Phoenix packs. I have a, a video specifically about, not this item, but a couple of the items that um, are most valuable to me, to me in this. Um, and this is fairly easy to get if you're picking up Phoenix packs for upgrades. Um, so I definitely recommend getting this. I'll, I'll link the description or the, um, the video down in the description that talks a little bit more in depth about this weapon. If you do not have this weapon, you're gonna wanna just use a crafted, preferably uh, dual heavy cannon. Um, if you just happen to have some dual cannons, they'll get the job done, but the dual heavies are definitely going to be better. Next, we have the phaser quad cannons. So these have a uh, effect uh, when they're firing that look just like the, the cannons on the Defiant in the Deep Space Nine show. Uh, they look and sound excellent. They also do a very decent amount of damage. You can get this weapon here from the, this is going to come from the Tactical Escort Refit. It is a tier four ship that you can purchase from the ship vendor for Dilithium. Um, so right now with my particular fleet's discount, this would cost me 136,000 Dilithium. So it's a good chunk of Dilithium, but it's well worth it. You can use this on many different, you know, builds, any kind of, you know, cannon builds that are phaser and it um, is used all the way through to the end game. So on my Legendary Defiant, um, I'm using this weapon. So it's well worth the investment. Again, if you don't have that up front, slap a, another crafted dual heavy phaser cannon uh, set on here and that'll work just fine. Um, so if you don't have either one of these, use the crafted along with the two mission drops up front. Let's take a look at the space set. Um, so space set, I am using the two piece deflector and shield. This is the Bajor defense set. And let's take a look at why we're using that individually. They're nothing super special, um, but the two piece set that we get from this is going to give us almost a 20% boost to phaser damage. This can also be used on disruptor and plasma damage weapon, uh, builds. And that is going to come from the mission. This is going to be in future proof, I believe. No, New Frontiers. And I know you guys, you've told me a million times how to say this, but um, I still can't. So this is the mission here, Sela and something or rather. And if we take a look here at the tooltip on the mission, you'll see there is the set. Um, so you could also use instead of say the deflector using like a colony deflector for the extra critical chance critical severity and then go with the engine um, the engine is is pretty decent um, i'm using a different engine um, number one because uh, i couldn't I, I didn't want to use any fleet gear in this and the engine i decided to go with is going to be the soul defense and the reason for that is there's a 25 percent chance to gain an extra plus four percent turn rate and also a damage resistance boost that lasts for 15 seconds. And this is when you're getting hit by any kind of energy weapon attacks. 
Um, so I went with this to get a little bit more oomph and, and speed and turning speed, especially on a cannon build here. It's very directional. Many of these weapons are only going to have a 45 degree arc, pretty much all of them. Uh, the torpedo has a 90 degree arc, but the rest of them, you need to really be lined up on that. So your piloting and the ability to turn qu you know, quicker um, is going to have a big effect on this particular build. And so that's why I went with this combination of deflector, engine, and shield. For the warp core, I'm using the deuterium stabilized warp core. This can be crafted. You can pick it up off the exchange. It'll come in random drops as well. Uh, you can buy it for basically next to nothing. And the main reason this is here is for the negative 15% weapons power cost uh, reduction. Um, so anytime you fire your weapons, you'll get a drain on your energy uh, here are your power for your weapons which reduces the amount of damage they're doing and especially under special firing modes that's going to be even more pronounced um, so anything that we can do to reduce that drain on the weapons power is going to have a big effect on our damage output in the back i am using the two variants of the trilithium enhanced phaser so the turret and the omnidirectional um, these have a chance by themselves to proc and give you additional fire cycle haste. Um, the two piece between one of these weapons and the console um, are also going to give us an additional 5% all the time fire cycling haste. Um, the two weapons being slotted here do not count towards that two piece set. So you do have to have the console in with it and we'll get to the console a little um, details here in just a moment. Um, these are, are going to come from Beyond the Nexus from New Frontiers Arc as well. The last weapon we're using in the back is a just crafted phaser turret. Um, you can craft these or pick them up off the exchange for very inexpensive. Next, I am running the experimental uh, weapon. This is the one that just comes with the ship. If you happen to have played um, through the events, it was one, two, three. Um, summer events ago, the Ryzean um, tier six ship, and you have that and you have the Soliton wave impeller um, experimental weapon, I would definitely use that. That is gonna be the best uh, experimental weapon you can use just in general on any of these ships. All right, next in the device slots, we're using battery energy amplifiers. Uh, these are giving us an extra 20% bonus energy weapons damage. Um, these can be crafted or purchased from the exchange. Next, we have deuterium surplus, and this is here for a clicky to give us some additional flight speed and turn rate. Next, we are using the trilithium D plating. This is giving us quite a bit of extra damage resistance as well as maximum shields and auxiliary power. Uh, this is a good survivability console that you can pick up from a mission drop. Um, this ship, especially at tier five, is very, very squishy. Um, so anything that we can do to increase the survivability of this. Uh, this is gonna come from the mission Ragnarok. And let's take a look at what arc that is. That is going to be in yesterday's war. No, future proof as well. So in future proof, the last one here, Ragnarok, you go ahead and run that and you will pick up or you can choose to pick up the Trilithium D, which is exactly what I would do. All right, moving along, uh, we have the zero point module. This comes from the Romulan rep. Uh, once you complete out tier one, you can go ahead and pick this up. This is here for the nice boost it gives to critical chance and also um, power to all subsystems. So this is increasing the power to our weapon systems and everything else. So we're getting a little bit extra for all of those. This is also giving us some additional drain expertise, which is going to help with these two quantum phase weapons because what they're doing by stripping shields, taking shields away is a drain effect. So anything that boosts drain is going to help that effect uh, do even more. Next, we have the third piece in the quantum phase sets, the quantum phase converter. And uh, this is primarily here for the phaser damage that it gives us. It gives us some additional auxiliary and also a huge boost to drain. Um, and again, because this set is really kind of based around drain, that's why that is in it. Now, I, I don't want that to be confused with this build is based around drain. This just happens to be what this set is based around. And it's a free set that also complements phaser. That's why I'm using it. The fact that it does drain, is just a secondary thing. I'm not doing anything intentional or specific to boost drain. Drain is not 
an ability that's going to help you much in the game. There are some builds specific for it. They are very niche builds and for specific circumstances. So the fact that it's doing that, great, it's extra. If if this whole set had nothing to do with drain whatsoever, it would still be in this build because it is phaser and it's boosting phaser. So just so we're clear about that. Uh, next in the science consoles, we are using the assimilated module. This comes from the Omega rep uh, after completing tier one. And this is here for the critical chance, critical severity, and the weapons power uh, boost that we get from that another 5%. And this has some control uh, effects, um, which really doesn't make any difference on this build. Um, and it also has um, starship damage um, control. So this is going to improve our hull restoration a little bit. Uh, for the tactical consoles, we are using all phaser relays uh, to boost our phaser damage. Some of these are upgraded. Some of them are not fully upgraded. Um, tactical console alternatives for this are going to be um, using your fleet spire um, locators or exploiters. Or if uh, you had um, got your rep in Discovery all the way up, then you would be using the Disco or the Disco. You would be using the Lorcator. Lorca uh, Custom Fire Control Suite, I believe is what it's called. Um, and it gives quite a huge boost to uh, shield penetration and critical chance. Uh, now, some other options for these here. Um, you could pick up the M6 computer. I've talked at length about that. Um, it increases firing cycle haste and some bonus damage uh, for dur duration. Gives you a clicky that does that. It comes off of the Temporal Escort, which is a Tier 3 ship, and you can also purchase that with Dilithium. Um, if I were running that on this build, I probably would swap it out for, shoot, I don't know, probably the Zero Point Module. Um, maybe the Trilithium, but I mean, this ship is, it, it depends on how you're going to play this. This ship is really should be played on normal, um, being that it's a tier five and that we're not using any, any paid starship traits. Um, if you're using some paid starship traits from sea store ships, you could definitely make this work in advance, but without that, it, it's going to be tough. You can do it, but it's going to be tough. Um, but working the M6 computer in here would also be a nice addition to this particular build. Let's take a look at our skill tree uh, specializations. We're using strategist and intel as the primary. Uh, we're using the standard skill tree that I use on pretty much all my builds on my main account here. And we'll just scroll through this for you to take a look. Obviously, tactical heavy. Uh, for traits, I am using all traits that are either dropped in game or come stock with your character. So we're using the beam training, we're using the cannon training. We are using Next Fleet Coordinator for the extra bonus damage when you're playing TFOs or in our team. We are using Innocuous for the extra critical severity and reduction in threat. Anything we can do to reduce threat, again, especially in a squishy build like this or squishy ship like this, if you're playing in advance, it's going to help us. We're using Operative, which is giving us an extra 1% critical chance, 2% critical severity. Next, we're using Point Blank Shot. Um, this comes from a mission in the Iconian arc. I'd have to go back and look through that. Let me know down in the comments. Uh, but this gives us a bonus damage that scales with how close you are to your enemy. Um, so basically, if you are anywhere in between two and six kilometers, that's where this scale range is. So if you're closer than two, you're not going to get any more than that 10. Uh, if you're farther out than six, you're not going to get any kind of boost from it whatsoever. Uh, so I definitely picked this up for free. It's it's a good trait uh, when when you're first building up these uh, these builds here. Next, we are using projectile training for the extra torpedo damage since we're running one up front. Um, and then the last two here, we're using techie for additional hull restoration and uh, starship damage control. This is also a passive uh, restoration as well. And lastly, I am using. Um, Modular Defense Specialist, Molecular Defense Specialist, sorry. Uh, and this is giving some additional um, damage resistance for Phaser, Disruptor, and Plasma, which are kind of the most common. You'd want to swap this out, say, if you were going to start playing through the Iconian arc or something like that, where for one that is going to give you some resistance, say, to Anti-Proton. Um, so you'll rotate this particular one out depending on the enemies that you're going up against. Um, additional resistance, again, is just going to help with that survivability. All right. 
Uh, next, all of our starship traits come from the specializations. So anytime you finish a specialization, it will unlock traits. Um, so these are all free to get once you fill these out. Um, so we're using arrest, and this is when defeating your primary target to self, negative 25%. Recharge time to bridge officer abilities can occur once every 30 seconds. Next, we are using unconventional tactics. This is turning the um, captain's ability brace for impact into a clicky that can be used as a damage boost. Um, so now when we click that, not only do we get the additional um, hit points and kinetic uh, and torpedo damage resistance rating, but we're getting a 15% bonus all damage for 15 seconds. It's a very nice free trait that you can get from filling this out. And this specialization is one of the ones that we would fill out first. So this is going to come from Strategist. Next, we are using improved command frequencies. This comes from the command uh, specialization, and this allows us uh, to call in our, our fleet backup here. So fleet support three. Generally, this can only be used once you go below 50% and it has a very long cooldown. By using this, this is allowing us to use it much, much faster and not needing to be at a low health. So we can use it when we want to tactically. Lastly, we are using improved prediction algorithms. This comes from the um, intelligence um, specialization, and this is giving us a uh, removal from, of debuffs on us, so negative debuff effects on us, and granting us additional accuracy, which helps with cannon scatter volley. It can stack up to four times. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our stations. So this was kind of a weird one here, especially on you know the free-to-play side. This gives you a ton of tactical stations, um, more than I know what to do with, unfortunately. So the ensign slots on these two stations here are just copies. They're not even being used, and they're not slotted. So we're just going to skip on past that. Um, but just so you know why there's copies here, it's because I didn't have really anything else to put there. Um, if you have any suggestions uh, for that, throw those down in the comments. I always appreciate that. Um, so in the first tactical uh, slot here, this is the commander tactical seat. Um, this is going to have beam overload too, since we have the Omni in the back. And we are running attack pattern uh, beta 2. And then our primary firing mode, which is going to be cannon scatter volley 3 in the commander seat. Next, we have the tactical team, and then we're using torpedo spread three. I'm sorry, torpedo spread two, since we have the torpedo up front, and we are using attack pattern omega. Now, I'm running two attack patterns, and they do cancel or on a shared cooldown. So if I click one, you'll see the other one goes down to 15 seconds. You can rotate between these. So depending on if I'm wanting to debuff a target or if I'm wanting to give myself some additional, you know, bonus damage and flight speed, um, I'll, I'll use one or the other depending on what the situation calls for. Um, let's take a look at engineering. So engineering, we're using emergency power to engines. This is paired with a duty officer that I have that comes from the Phoenix boxes that allows me to refresh evasive maneuvers um, by using emergency power to engines. This is on pretty much every single build that I have. The duty officer is very easy to get from the Phoenix packs. So you'll see that's on cooldown now and we use that and now we're down to five seconds and it's ready to use again. So maneuverability, being able to position your ship is really really important in a build like this because of that narrow firing arc that you have. Next, we are using emergency power to weapons too, and this is here for the plus 13.3% emergency or, um, bonus uh, energy weapon damage. Uh, so very, very nice. This is also giving us a uh, boost to the weapons power um, so that when we're, when you, when you, pair this with a firing mode, this really makes a big difference in making sure those power levels are not dropping very much. All right, lastly, for science, we are using hazard emitters. Um, this is here for the heal over time. This is also being paired with uh, strategists anytime that we run a heal like this. Um, it is going to give us some additional critical uh, severity, or I'm sorry, critical chance. So I have this in the spam bar because it comes up pretty often. And with all of this paired with Photonic Officer, 
Again, Photonic Officer is the best go-to budget just starting way to cool down bridge officer abilities. Uh, this seating only allows for me to put Photonic Officer 1 in. Um, if it had more, we would go higher uh, on a budget build like this. And what this is going to do is reduce the recharge time of all of the bridge officer abilities that are currently on cooldown by 2% every second. Um, so 2% doesn't sound like a lot, but it does add up over time as those are ticking. So that's every second for 20 seconds. All right, let's look at our duty officers here. So roster for space. So I am using Hamlet. Um, I think this actually comes from a research project. We could take this off and we wouldn't know any difference. It's This is boosting the recharge time of um, tactical team. Uh, we could lose this and it wouldn't make any difference. I just, I donate most of my, my lower level ones to the fleet. So I didn't have a lot. So we'll just take that off. I haven't even done the run yet. Just so it's a hundred percent. Uh, next we have Lar. This is going to come from the, um, one of the missions off of the Nimbus arc. This is giving us a recharge time, uh, boost on our torpedoes. Uh, next we have the, uh, the emergency con, uh, officer here. And this is the one that comes from the Phoenix boxes by having him slotted. This is what allows us to recharge our evasive maneuvers by clicking emergency power to engines. And then lastly, I am running one damage, um, control engineer. And what this is doing is, uh, this gives us a chance to reduce recharge time of emergency power to subsystem abilities. So basically anytime we're clicking a emergency power to subsystem, which is going to be um, the emergency power to weapons or emergency power to engines, this is going to give us a chance to recharge this faster. Now, if you have more of these, I would slot three, which is the maximum because that proc chance will stack. So if you have three of these, it'll be much, much more likely um, for you to get that recharge. I used to use these a lot more heavily. I've dismissed some of them because of now using things like Boiler or Ox to Bat for cooldown and recharge. Um, it, it hasn't been as viable and I needed more, more space. Um, so, but if you have more of these or you can get more of these, stack these up to fill in the, the last three um, of these slots that you have here, because that'll be beneficial to you. All right, let's lastly just take a look at our endeavors so we can, geez, come on, let's look at our endeavors. Am I gonna be able to click this button? Let's adjust this down. Now we can click this button. So I am at uh, 280 on my main here and you can see what kind of boost that we're getting. Now, if you're just starting the game or you're really low, I'm like barely over 100 on my free to play and uh, my free to play does very, very well. Um, don't feel like, you know, I'm so far behind, it's not going to matter. It does matter and it adds up fast. You'll pick and choose, you know, which ones it, it gives you the choices between pick the ones that make the most sense for you. For me, you know, it's critical chance, critical severity, um, and then, you know, your damage type. So energy weapon, damage space. Um, you know, if you have a, um, exotic build going, you'll do that. Um, but you know, you can pick and choose those and even, even having 50, 60 points, especially if a couple of them are in say, you know, critical chance, for instance, critical chance. If you even have half of what I have, I mean, that's more than almost any console will give you in the game. So if you're real low on this, don't, don't feel discouraged by that. Just, you know, play the game, complete your, your dailies on those. And, um, you don't need to be maxed out for this to make a huge difference. I mean, if you look at the bottom of this, I'm not even, I'm just over halfway. Uh, I have some stuff not even filled out because you know, half of this stuff doesn't make a big difference, but some of this stuff really, really makes a big difference and, and, and will make huge differences on your build. So make sure you're going through and, and doing those. All right, why don't we go ahead and take this? We're going to go and do it a wanted on normal. Um, we're going to skip advanced and uh, and do it on normal because that's really what, what this, this build is designed to be able to perform under and do very well. This build is going to be great for story content, uh, for doing any kind of normal content, or if you have a couple, you know, of paid C store traits, um, and especially if they're survivability ones, um, th that's going to make a huge difference. Survivability, threat reduction, anything like that um, will bump this ship just to the next level where you can really enjoy playing advanced content. You could play advanced content with it now, uh, but you could pop very, very easily. You would have to play it very lightly and be careful. Hopefully there's tanks around or someone else taking the threat. The ship does a decent amount of damage, and that's kind of a trade-off where I, I did run it through an ISA, 
And I died three or four times because I got in there, the ship's doing a ton of damage and I'm, I'm getting focused and I'm dead right away. So we could call it a glass cannon in an environment like that, but really it's not. The ship's built the way that it's supposed to be and the way it's designed. It's not a tanky ship. It's just the hit points and, and what it comes with at a tier five not upgraded is just not quite there for doing the advanced content without having some premium traits. Um, so, all right, let's go ahead and jump into a wanted and let's see how this bad boy does. All right. So as you can see, this um, this ship and build handled itself just fine in here. Um, we could probably do, like I said, advanced. Um, and once you practice the ship and you know learn how to evade and get away when you need to, um, it could definitely make it through it. And it, like I said, it would just be kind of tough. Um, so I would call this a solid top end normal mode. Uh, build slash ship and maybe entry level into the advanced um, like I said especially if you had some of those those traits that uh, gave you some more survivability or reduced threat um, what would definitely help with uh, with a ship and build like this so there it is guys uh, 100 percent free free to play build for um, the defiant tier 5 here uh, like I said before, it's just such an excellent looking ship. Um, it flies good. It feels good when you're flying it. Um, you know, re reminds me of the first time I saw it decloak out outside of Deep Space Nine. It was uh, awesome, and and it still is. So, um, 
All right, guys, I think that covers the build video there. Um, do remember this video is gonna be going up in the morning for me, so today's the 8th, so it'll go up in the 9th, and giveaway in the Discord, and on YouTube and on Twitter will be pulled on uh, tomorrow. So uh, the day that this goes live, the following day, that'll, that'll go up. So make sure if you haven't taken advantage of that uh, to go ahead and get in on that. Um, definitely check out the Discord if you're not a part of that. If you have questions on this build or anything else uh, in uh, you know the, the realm of uh, Star Trek Online and uh, you need help, want some community, uh, link for that will be down in the description as well. All right, guys, until next time, I appreciate it. If you need something else to watch in the meanwhile, um, here are two other videos, free to build um, or free to play mission drops that you might be interested in. Till next time, guys, have a good one. Thank you for watching.